So yes, wonderful. So maybe we can start. Hello and welcome to this session on DECA, State of the Art Universal and Interactive E-Learning. If you have any questions, please use the chat or the Q&A tool on the right side. And uh, now enjoy the session. Hi, welcome everybody. Uh, let me just share my screen here. Okay. Welcome everybody. My name is Samantha Monty. I'm a research assistant in the Department of Human Computer Interaction at the Julius Maximilian Universität in Würzburg. Uh, thank you for attending today. I wanted to share a little bit with you about a project that we've been working on called Decker. Uh, Decker is a software system that we have been developing in coordination with colleagues from two other universities, at the Berliner Hochschule für Technik and the Technische Universität in Dortmund. Uh, so Decker is an innovative content development and presentation software system. What that means is we've developed tools to help teachers and other scientific lecturers to create media rich presentations that are not only engaging, but are also full of opportunities to promote audience interaction. Uh, these tools aim to, to uh, mitigate any development any technological gaps of teaching staff with easy to use tools such as a native chalkboard app, speaker notes, and even a unique video capture tool. With Decker, we endeavor to support teaching staff to use the newest technology available while also promoting the most effective pedagogical methods. Our software takes basic markdown text and converts it into HTML and PDF documents, making lectures highly portable. This means that you can publish these HTML-based lectures on websites to be accessible over the internet or to a learning management system to be tracked. They can be printed as PDF documents or handouts, and you can even just open a browser in your computer without publishing anything and display these presentations. This means that students can learn at any time of the day. Decker has the capacity to bridge the gap between face-to-face -face and distance learning. Presentations are suitable for traditional classroom learning, blended learning, and e-learning. So I thought I would show you some of the features that we offer in Decker. Um, and then maybe dive right into actually building the presentation with you. So if you have any questions along the way, feel free to enter them in the chat. And um, I'll take some time at the end while we're building this to answer some questions. With Decker, teachers can easily embed videos directly into lectures. Uh, you can add full screen local video files, which is what you're seeing here. And you can even add streaming media to presentations. Um, videos can be full screen, or you can actually specify the height and width of the video player. Um, this is an example of uh, an embedded YouTube video. This is a video from our department. I'll just play a few seconds of it. This is an older video, but it's embedded directly into our presentation. I also have an example here of a Vimeo video that's embedded directly into our presentation. Uh, video controls can be automatic with options to autoplay videos, mute the volume, specify a sp start time, or even loop continuously. Um, you can either choose to show or hide these video controls to allow manual playback. Uh, so in this regard, you can see both of these have uh, video control at the bottom that users can interact directly with these videos that we can show or hide. We have great support for images in Decker. You can illuminate concepts by adding these images and graphics to your presentations. Again, you can choose to show these either at full 
screen or specify a height and width to these images. We have quite a bit of support for um, um, the display of your slides as far as the positioning of elements on your slides. And I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, here we have three different columns of uh, data. So we have, again, some uh, dynamic support for different layout options so that you can position content on your slides. In this particular slide, I also have an example of a web link that you can click and it will bring you to a website, whatever web link you've added. We've incorporated features from Chart.js in Decker. That means that you can punch up your data by not just displaying numbers, but by actually charting this. Chart.js offers the ability to chart data in bar charts, line charts. Um, I have some displays here of, here's a pie chart, uh, and here's a line graph. These are very easy to incorporate into our software, into your presentation. You can also embed animated diagrams and charts in your presentation. This is an example. As I step through, as I move through the presentation, you'll see the step-by-step -step learning that can occur. And this is an example of an active learning that we would have. And I'll show you some more examples. Here is an example of a diagram rendered with graphs and a LaTeX diagram. We've also integrated MathJax formulas into Decker. These are scientific tools that will help you render text to look as if they were actual equations. Um, so this is from the MathJax website, which I can uh, just open up here in another tab and show you. Here's the MathJax website. Um, and so you can simply just um, copy some of these uh, text commands and then put them directly into your presentation. Oops, excuse me, there we are. And here again is a step-by-step -step presentation of some of these math formulas. And again, you'll see this formula being completed as I move through with my spacebar through the presentation. We can incorporate uh, programming code blocks in our presentations. This is an example of a C++ code block. Um, it's highlighted specific syntax for C++. I have another example here of a JavaScript code block um, with, again, programming specific or uh, language specific highlighting. As I mentioned before, you can build on ideas iteratively revealing images in text. I'm using my space bar just to walk myself through this presentation. We have the ability to embed full web pages, fully functional websites, as well as fully functional PDF documents. Go through here. Well. Um, as I said before, we support a lot of interactive teaching with Decker. Um, this is, these next few slides are examples of some uh, interactive demos that we've included that students can use during asynchronous learning. You can also use this during in-person learning. Um, in this particular example, you can see that as I use my space bar, it will actually change the figure and I can use my mouse to slowly interact with this particular diagram. Here's another example of uh, an interactive application that you can easily embed in Decker. I have just a few of these um, interactive diagrams that I'll just go through and show you. These are very easily added to the software. This is an example of a demo with D3JS. This is built with uh, C++. We 
We've also incorporated the ability to add and translate Sage Math and Python notebooks. Uh, so in, here you see this is an example of interactive math with Sage. Um, as I click evaluate, it's going to render the chart below. And what's interesting about this is that I can actually interact with this. And students can interact with this as a learning tool. I have an example of virtually the same thing uh, programmed with R. My next example is um, an example of one. Here's the R. And this next one is with Python. Uh, again, it's the same feature, it's just a different language. In addition to those tools, we have several tools to help um, lecturers as you're actually delivering the presentation. Um, we've included these, these uh, annotation tools. Um, down here in the bottom left corner, you'll see a little icon. And if I click it, it's going to give me a small menu uh, with a few different options. We have a laser option that allows me to circle particular points on my slide. As a, later, as a laser that slowly fades out. I also have the ability to actually make annotations on my slide. So this is a simple whiteboard tool that we've developed and incorporated in here. Um, I have the ability to simply uh, pick different colors and um, differentiate the, the diameter of the, uh, of the pen. Uh, I can add blank slides below this by clicking this plus sign. And you can see it's given me some blank space below the side, which I can uh, either display a graph if I choose to or not. I can make notes here. I suppose I was supposed to draw a chart here. Um, what not. So I can add this uh, on the fly. And then what's interesting is that I can actually save this with my presentation to be used at a further time. So I can download these and add them to my presentation. So these are our whiteboard features, all hidden down here. We also have a menu feature. Uh, this menu might be something more that you would use um, maybe during asynchronous learning if students are learning at home. Uh, we have this menu that's automatically generated with a listing of all of the slides in the presentation. Um, there's also, as you can see up there, the option to export your presentation to PDF. Uh, but this is going to allow me to jump around in my presentation if I so desire to. I'm navigating through this presentation using my spacebar, um, we have quite a few keyboard shortcuts that I won't go into, uh, but you can also just simply use the uh, the arrows over here to navigate through the presentation. One of the newer features that we've incorporated is an audience response system. And this is, again, an example of an active learning tool that we've uh, built into Decker. Uh, so what this would do is allow teachers to pose a question to a classroom. And questions can, excuse me, students can actually vote on the responses to this. Um, and this is all handled through a QR code. So um, you can see the small QR codes display there. If I push my C button on my keyboard, this is actually going to show me a larger QR code that allows students to scan and uh, open up a web page to vote. I can also get to this web page by going on this link. If students don't have a cell phone with them. Um, and then I can activate my poll by simply pushing the A button. These polls can be timed if you choose to. This one is not. This one is fully controllable by the lecturer. As I've picked, push the A button, students will now see this <clears throat> on their cell phones or on their, um, on their machines, on their computers, where they can then add their vote. And when I close the poll, I have the ability to show the results. So thank you for voting. We have two votes for B, the American-Canada border. Um, so these are, we have the ability to actually save these results if you are an administrator or a lecturer. Let us now have a closer look in this very tight coupling between the sensory input and our internal state and also of our behavior. So as you can see here, this is my uh, professor. 
And um, what he's done is actually recorded himself as he's giving a Decker presentation. So Decker has the ability to uh, allow lecturers to record themselves and add them to their presentations to be displayed later. We have very simple tools to do that. Um, and this is quite useful for asynchronous learning. Another nice feature we have is uh, the ability for students to actually pose questions directly to slides. Uh, over here in the top right corner, you see this question mark icon. And um, you can see that there are two questions that have already been posed for the slides. As a lecturer, as an administrator, I would actually receive notifications through email when students pose questions to my slides. Then I can log in. There's an, a small login button down here. And I can either edit their questions and or respond to their questions. As a student, if I'm viewing this, I just simply type my question here and it's shown. These questions are visible to all lecture participants, anyone who's viewing this slide. And you can see that there's a small icon, a little red icon with an indication that there are two questions shown there. There's also an indication in my menu that there are two questions on this particular slide. We've also built some uh, quiz capabilities into Decker where students can actually, well, presenters also can pose questions and uh, students can come in here and vote. We've incorporated a few different types of questions. This is an example of a multiple choice question, uh, but we also have um, drag and drop questions. So for example, here, let's drag these. Well, I didn't do very well on that. We have uh, insert choice questions where students can drop, excuse me, select from a drop down list, and we have free text options as well. So in addition to all of these uh, interactive features, we also, of course, provide support for some of the basic slide design and setup. Um, we have the ability to create tables, um, mark text, as you can see here with these colored brackets to indicate different topics. Um, we support inline citations. Uh, so uh, you can reference your work using um, big text documents. This citation style is adjustable um, via citation style language, CSL. And we automatically include references at the end of our presentations. So these are just, this is just a small example of some of the things that we're able to do. I thought what I would do now is actually go in and build a presentation for you and show you how, uh, how I can do that. Are there any questions at this time that I can answer? Someone uh, asked whether you could share the link to the project. I'm sorry, could you say that one more time? And could you, um, maybe like in the end, maybe you could share the link to the project? Yes, of course. Um, so in, um, of course, uh, this, website this presentation that i'm going through right now is uh is a um, posted on the internet and so you can access this at any time uh, and i will share that in addition there's um on our website i'll just show you right now uh elearning.unigertsburg.de slash decker this is where you can actually download our software we have downloads available for Linux, Windows, and Mac systems. Thank you very much. So in the meantime, I have Decker running on my computer. And what I thought I would do is build, interactively build uh, an example of a presentation using some of the examples that I've already given you. Uh, so the screen that you're seeing on the right here is uh, my web browser. This is just on my machine. This is not hosted on the internet anywhere. Um, I have my title slide already built. 
Uh, and on the left, you can see this is just a plain text file. Excuse me, it's actually a markdown file um, with just text written in it. For those of you that aren't familiar with markdown, it's a very easy to use um, uh, text document, uh, documentation uh, tool language. Um, anyway, I see I'm getting a little short on time, so I'm going to speed up here. Um, so to add slides, you're going to begin by using a pound symbol. This pound symbol will indicate that a new slide should be present. Um, so as I'm building this on the left, My decor is running here. Yeah. Ah, it's not building it. Uh, so as I'm building this, it will actually translate it. So what I'll do is just go through some examples of what you can do with Decker. Um, as I mentioned before, we have quite a bit of support for images and for uh, movies. And so I'll just show you how easy it would be to add um, an image into your presentation. What I've written here are these three symbols, the exclamation point, the brackets, and the parentheses. This is a basic uh, instruction for markdown on including any kind of image or movie in here. And um, what you're going to do is just simply in the parentheses add the pathway to your file that you want to include. So this is an example of an image, uh, the first image that I've shown, the um, pathway ray two. Let's go back to it here. This here. And so this slide on the right is built with just using these two lines. I've included a header, a title header, a new slide, and my image, and it's incorporated that in there. The next slide that we have, um, I'll show this. Um, this here is also built with this same language. Instead of putting an image tag there, I've put a movie tag, and I've included a movie clip in there. So this simple markdown language allows you to import files directly into your presentation, whether they're uh, movies, images, audio clips. Um, you can also include um, YouTube videos and any other kind of streaming media. So. Up here, I've actually pulled up the uh, YouTube video that we have. When you go onto YouTube, you can click this share button. And what you'll see is at the very end, you'll see an ID tag for your YouTube video. If you copy that tag, you can include that into your presentation. So all you're going to do is in the brackets, instead of, in, excuse me, in the parentheses, instead of indicating the pathway to your file, you're going to indicate the pathway to whatever media hosting service this is, in, in this case it's YouTube, with a colon and then the ID for your tag. And this will automatically import this or embed this particular uh, video into your file. So I see that I'm quite short on time now, and I apologize that I took a little bit longer than I wanted to in explaining things. Um, I thought that I would just go back to see if there are any questions. Stop sharing my screen here. Does anybody have any questions that I can answer at this time? Okay. 
I see that Christoph has been quite actively answering questions. Thank you, Christoph. Uh, yes, we do have several departments that are using Decker throughout our university, and we're uh, quite thrilled to have more people, of course, use it. So the link to um, our, here I'll show you, this is the link to our software. It's elearning.uniwurzburg.de slash Decker. And again, if you just scroll down there, you'll have uh, download links for the uh, different software systems. And you're welcome to get in touch with me if you encounter any questions or problems with that. Uh, if any of you were, uh, were able to catch Florian Kahn's uh, presentation earlier today, he demonstrated the use of Decker within virtual reality, which was uh, very wonderful to see and um, has been quite useful for us. Okay, so uh, there's a question from Leah about the use of Decker between synchronous and asynchronous sessions with students. Um, as you can imagine, last year we really tested the boundaries of Decker with a lot of asynchronous learning. Um, I think this is where we um, spent quite a bit of time developing our uh, video recording software, um, which unfortunately I wasn't able to show you, but it simply occurs with the click of an R button to open a recording window and um, a V button to toggle your video on and off. So Decker allows you to either show your video or just record a voice as you're going through these conversations. Um, with synchronous learning, I think that we are using this a little bit more for um, the audience response polls, um, some of the quizzes. Um, so it really depends on the type of lecture that you're giving and the material that you're covering. And now just, we're very uh, excited to have people try this. So again, I'm very uh, eager if you are able to download the software to please get in touch with me and uh, let me know uh, if you have any questions and if you wanna meet via Zoom, we can and I can give you a small training. One of the nice features that we've included in there is an example slides. So as you're um, downloading Decker, we have a presentation that you can download that will walk you through how to use the software, how to build some of these features. And um, we've also got some great examples of using our video recording software and whatnot. So I think we're getting to the end of this uh, presentation. It's maybe a just for uh, the last minutes, do you maybe have an email address for people to get in touch with you? Yes, of course. Uh, let me share my screen. And um, I'll just open up. This is uh, our website, hci.univotesburg.ede. Under people, you can find uh, a picture of me, Samantha Monty, and you can find some contact information for me. Please feel free to contact me at any time. We're very happy to hear from you. Perfect, thank you very much. So then maybe, yeah, thank you for this session, for this presentation. I think it was very, very exciting. And um, I guess you will get some emails soon. <laughs> and yeah, then thank you very much. I will send you all back to the lobby now and then close this session and have fun on your University Future thank Festival. You very much.